Today, we're gonna take you on a little trip up to a place many would call unlivable. We're talking about a little place called Alaska. Here, we've gathered up some exciting and interesting information about the state. And we've got to say, it's some pretty good stuff. Get ready to take a walk on the wild side. This is Fascinating Facts About the Last Frontier. Ridiculously reasonable. We'll kick this thing off at the United States purchase of Alaska. Now, you'd think a place with so much land and such majestic beauty that Alaska would come with a hefty price tag, right? Well, not necessarily. It is hypothesized that the Russians had been the first to settle the state possibly way back in 1648, although they most definitely reached it by August 21st, 1732, and the first permanent European settlement popped up in 1784. The Russians never fully settled it, but they laid claim, and by the mid-1800s, they weren't reaping many benefits from owning the land, so they sold it. The United States reached a purchase agreement and on March 30th, 1867, bought Alaska from the Russian Empire for just $7.2 million. A form of flag raising was held on October 18th, 1867, when the American flag raised after the Russian flag was lowered. And that day is celebrated every year as a holiday called Alaska Day. Still not far from the Russians. While the United States may have purchased Alaska off of the Russians in 1867, the Russians didn't have very far to get back to their homeland. The Bering Strait, the body of water separating the US and Russia, is only around 51 miles wide at its narrowest, between Cape Dejnev in Russia and Cape Prince of Wales in Alaska. Then, there are some islands in the strait. Little Diomede belongs to the US, and Big Diomede belongs to Russia, both of which are populated and lived on. The really crazy thing? They're only 2.2 to 2.5 miles apart. Lynn Cox, an American swimmer, swam from Little Diomede to Big Diomede in just two hours and five minutes back in 1987, during the Cold War. This just shows that Alaska really isn't all that far from its roots and original owners, and it also shows that some people aren't afraid of anything. Design of the flag. One would think that highly skilled, state-hired artists would design state flags, no? Well, such is not the case with Alaska. In fact, the state's flag was designed by Benny Benson, a 13-year-old student in 1927. He was able to do so because of a contest thought up by territorial governor George Parks, in which students between 7th and 12th grade were able to submit their designs for the first state flag. Little old Benny Benson, who had a storied past at such a young age, won the contest out of 142 submissions, and his flag design was adopted. On July 9, 1927, the flag was released, and at a ceremony in Seward, he was given a $1,000 educational scholarship and a watch with a face decorated with his flag design. Strange Laws as with every state, Alaska has some fascinating laws pertaining to pretty much anything and everything. In Anchorage, nobody can tie their pet dog to the roof of a car for any reason. They must ride inside. They also can't live in a trailer while it is being towed anywhere in the city. In Haines, one must obtain the proper permit to conceal carry a slingshot. Related to that, if you own a bow and arrow, slingshot, BB gun, or any kind of other projectile firing weapon in Nome, you may not discharge it within the city. In Fairbanks, you can find yourself in a heap of trouble if you decide to give some of your beer to a moose. And speaking of mooses, in all of Alaska, it's a criminal act to punish one of the animals from a plane. How many other states do you think have that last law? Not many, we can tell you that much. Togo. Many have heard the story of a dog named Balto, but not many have heard the even more heroic story of Togo. During what is known as the 1925 serum run to Nome, Alaskans in Nome desperately needed a serum to combat a diphtheria outbreak. But the only plane that could fly it in wouldn't start because it was frozen. So, a train carried the serum from Anchorage to Nenana. And from there, sled dog teams departed to carry it to Nome. Balto is typically called the hero of the story since he and his team took the serum into Nome after completing a 55-mile journey in the dark. And Balto saved his team more than once. But Togo and his team had already carried the serum around 200 miles through the wind, snow, and freezing temperatures. And Togo also kept his team alive several times. Togo's team passed it on to Charlie Olsen, who then passed it to Balto's team, led by Norwegian musher Gunnar Kassen. So who's the real hero of the story? Low temperature record. 
Now, this probably won't come as much of a surprise, but we've got to tell you, Alaska holds the record for the lowest temperature ever recorded in the United States. On January 23, 1971, the temperature in the area of Prospect Creek Camp in northern Alaska plummeted, all the way down to negative 79.8 degrees Fahrenheit. Officials said to heck with it, and rounded the temperature off at negative 80 degrees, and that record has stood ever since. Now that's just the record for the United States. On North America, the record low is negative 81.4 degrees Fahrenheit set in Canada's Yukon Territory at Snag on February 3, 1947. The world record for lowest temperature? That was set on July 21, 1983 in Antarctica at the Soviet Vostok Station, where it measured an incredible negative 128.6 degrees Fahrenheit. It gets cold in the north, but also in the south. Long summers produce great results. Okay, so it can get pretty cold in Alaska, especially when the sun is barely out throughout the winter months. Barrow, a town in Alaska, even experiences around 67 days without the sun every year. However, in the summer, Alaskans get to take advantage of the extra sunlight they get, and it tends to show in their crops. In some places, the sun is out for 20 hours a day, and in Barrow, it doesn't fully set for about 82 days. In recent years, Alaskans have seen 35-pound broccoli, 65-pound cantaloupe, and 138-pound cabbage. While the biggest of the giant produce are intentionally grown to be big, most of the crops there grow larger on their own. Why did we ever think of the extra sunlight Alaska receives coming with excellent benefits? It's huge. Now, it's no secret that Alaska is the biggest state in the entire United States. In fact, you could fit Texas, Montana, and California into it all at once, or any other combination of that equates to about one-fifth of the entire lower 48. It's huge. And you know how the U.S. is bordered by coastlines on its eastern, western, and some of its southern sides? Well, Alaska has more total coastline than the rest of the 49 states combined. And about 80% of the state is inaccessible via road, so planes, boats, and off-road vehicles are needed to reach those cut-off lands. Oh, and dog sleds. We can't forget the dog sleds. Fun fact, Juneau, you know, the capital, can't be accessed via road, and it's the only state capital which can't be. Post Pearl Harbor There's no arguing about how big an event the bombing of Pearl Harbor was, but did you know that about six months after the day that lives in infamy on June 3, 1942, the Japanese attacked Dutch Harbor in the Aleutian Islands? Now, the Aleutian Islands are part of the territory of Alaska, so the United States obviously didn't take it all that well. They also invaded the islands of Kiska and Atu on June 6 and 7, respectively, and all of this was called the Aleutian Islands Campaign. Eventually, almost all of the invaders lost their lives, with estimates putting Japanese loss of life at around 2,500, and 28 were taken prisoner. Loss of life for the Americans was around 550, although they eventually won back their islands and Alaska hasn't had to deal with any full-scale invasion attempts since. Roadkill. So what does one do when they hit roadkill in the lower 48? Probably call someone to retrieve it, move it off the road, leave it where it is, or, for some, take it home and cook it. What does one do with roadkill in Alaska? Well, things like moose, bears, and caribou when hit by a car in the state, are considered property of the state. But they do something pretty excellent with the carcasses. They're taken to butchers, who salvage the good meat, and then it's distributed out to various charity organizations, who then feed those in need. The Alaska Natives Typically, the indigenous peoples of Alaska are grouped together into one group called, well, Alaska Natives. But that doesn't mean they're all of the same tribe or people. In fact, they can be broken up into five different main groups. They are the Southeast Coastal Indians, made up of the Tinglets and the Haida. There are the Southern Eskimos, which are mostly Gewit. There are the Interior Indians, which are primarily Athabascans. There are also the Northern Eskimos, or Inupiat. And lastly, there are the Aleuts. The ancestors of the groups migrated into Alaska thousands of years ago, and they mostly stayed in the area and didn't go south. They just stayed in place and came up with ingenious ways to survive the harsh climate. These people and the people of other native cultures make up more than 15% of the total population of Alaska, which is far more than in any other state in the United States. We've learned some pretty interesting stuff about Alaska already, and there's still more to learn. But first, we'd like to ask you, have you ever been to Alaska? Would you go? If you've got any experience out in the last frontier, we want to hear about your visit. Tell us about it in the comments below. 1. Broken History Back in 2011, University of Colorado Boulder archaeologists were up in Alaska where they did an excavation of a 1,000-year-old Eskimo dwelling. What did they find to change history? The house, located in a beach ridge at Cape Espenberg, hid a secret that shifted our view of ancient trade between Eurasia and the New World. 
The archaeologists found an object that experts think is some kind of bronze buckle that had to have been made in a mold, and they also found a metal bead. The buckle and bead date back to sometime between 1100 and 1300, which was a time the Thule people were inhabitants of the area. The fact that the metal had been smelted, which was a process unknown to the natives of the area at the time, showed that trade had been occurring between North America and Eurasia long before we once believed. Christopher Columbus is rolling over right now. Not the first time, and probably not the last. If you got a kick out of this video, or if you learned anything new about Alaska, do us a favor and give us a like. Subscribe to our channel below or by clicking on our logo right here so that you never miss any of our amazing uploads. Also, check out this next video that we've hand-selected just for you.